On behalf of the Kirk Sessions of Knox Presbyterian Church in Floss and the Elmville Presbyterian Church in Elmville, we welcome you to today's recording of our service for Sunday, the 25th of July. I want to talk just a little bit about the message at this point. Somewhere in seminary, they insisted that I read not so wonderful stuff written by a fellow called Freud, a fellow called Young, and then we got into something called cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy. Dr. David Rosen helped with Carl Young and his clinical intense analysis of dreams, which I completely failed to understand. Anyway, Rosen is responsible for some of the thought that is in the sermon today. He's not to be held accountable for it. He tried to teach me as well as he could. Let us worship God. Join me, please, in our call. Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways. You hem me in behind and before. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Let us worship God. Grace 
and strong help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. First reading is from Genesis 28, verses 10 through 19a, Jacob's dream at Bethel. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. You shall spread ahead to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done that that I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel. Second reading is Psalm 86, 11 through 17. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love towards me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of shame. O oh God, the insolent rise up against me. A band of ruffians seeks my life, and they do not set to you before them. But you, O oh Lord, are a God of merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give me your strength to your servant. Save the child of your serving mind. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because of you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. In Matthew 13, verses 24 to 30, the parable of weeds among the wheat. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. Out while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among them, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in the field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this, the slave said to him. Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, he would uproot the wheat among them, along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
way he did. He's a double crosser who robs his brother of his birthright as well as his father's blessing. He's a fraudster who used his old blind father's disability and stole what he wanted from him. To say the least, he's a con man, running from his brother Esau who wants to kill him badly. He's running towards his uncle Laban's house, looking for a wife. It's dusk, desert darkness is coming. He finds some stones to use as a pillow and as a windbreak. And he sleeps and dreams. There's a ladder with both of its legs on earth that reaches way, way, way up. Heaven's inhabitants are coming and going on it. Is Jacob on some kind of spiritual quest or other? Nope. He's running for his life. He's in the middle of nowhere. And well, the next thing the Lord is with him, making him promises. I am with you. I will give you. I will not leave you. I have promised. Promises to an immortal thief. Are they really called for? Jacob is not a good man, yet God gives him everything. When Jacob wakes up, he's still a fraudster. But now he's also God's chosen one. He's smart enough to know he just what he's seen. He's been sleeping at one of the thin places of the world. And he says, how awesome is this place. This is not other than God's house. And they need to have him. Does he deserve that dream? Well, you know what? He remembers it. And he believes it. He readily accepts it as one of God's good gifts, specially crafted for him. It really happened to him, in other words. That, that ladder absolutely connected heaven and earth. Somewhere, someplace, in the middle of nowhere. Abraham, his grandfather, had also cemented a covenant with God in a dream. There had been a fire pot and a flaming torch in Abraham's dream. And it also changed his life. Never mind those of his children and his children's children. Those descendants became the people created by a dream. They were set apart to bless and sanctify all the people that God had created on the earth. Did you know what made them capable of dreaming too? All the way from Abraham with his fire pot, Jacob with his ladder, Joseph with his sheaves of wheat, all the way from great grandpa Abraham to Joseph, ruler of Egypt, to Joseph, husband of Mary. A pile of rocks for Jacob becomes the gate to heaven. He stood his pillow there to mark the spot. He called it Bethel as he anointed the rock of all Bethel, house of God. Will you be able to find your Bethel in this much changed and changing province of Ontario? Will you in this changing environment be able to find a place that's so real to you that you will remember it for the rest of your life? The moment life changed, Remember how the light moved and the 
things around you. How the air smelled. How your heart felt when it was free again. Will you be able to treasure those moments of your life? Will you be able to go back there and offer thanksgiving and gratitude? As you will be able to often. And what if you don't do any of that? What if you never had a dream? Or you can't kind of find your way back? What then? Will you be hard on yourself? <coughs> don't be. You'll have lots of company on the way. <coughs> As dreamers are not what we used to be, are we? We don't take the time to dream. We don't have the time. But we are busy, but busy with what? You might ask. Here's a small list. Leading, managing, ministering, feeding, teaching, fixing, working, reading, pleasing. Is it time to find a lonely place? lie down there. A place with nothing going on, with the slow movement of time, and a soft wind with peace wrapped on it. <coughs> to dream do you need to waste time? Be still. Be a good for nothing. Did the pandemic teach you much? Will you remember what it taught? If and when you listened, then took some time alone and daydream. So are you and I really too busy to dream like Jacob? Are we just too much good? <coughs> Are we really too good to be? Have we Christians lost confidence in our ability to dream? Or is our dream a dream of a healed earth full of holy people, where we see no longer never dimly, but face to face at last? A dream where God's presence is real, right here, right now. Just like the hands we've been missing on our shoulder, our faces without masks. A dream where we can stay as long as we may, we can or will not. And sooner rather than later, eyes will look again in a world dreadfully more terrible than any nightmare. The Delta dream. Residential schools, undrinkable water, famine, fires from hell, child labor, war, and all its terrible outcomes. We need to wake up, don't we? We have no choice. You and I are dreamers, though, aren't we? That is who we are. Will we share our dreams? Will we keep them? Boil them up inside our eyes life such that it's not worth dreaming of anymore. Does that all of that mean we don't believe that our dreams are possible right now? Or will we simply dismiss them as our very own meanderings are a product of our not so very good imagination. For Jacob, dreaming took him to another reality, a spiritual place where God could be heard talking to human 
beings of the depths of who they actually are. For Jacob, dreams told him that God needed him to know. For Jacob, dreams were a natural way in which God could act. And I filled him with wonder. My grandkids still believe in dreams and that they will come true to yours. Most of us adults have been taught some science, some math, some philosophy. We've been taught to think, not to dream. We've also lived long enough to see our dreams flounder and drown. We've been disappointed by our dreams. We remind ourselves now, often, that there is black and white work to be. To be done in a black and white world, dreams are worth nothing. They can't inoculate us against COVID or any other health issue or by someone else or ourselves a loaf of bread. So we put in long hours doing, doing, doing. We keep track of so many of this and so many of that. We think about the emails, the telephone calls, the laundry, the dog box with no joy, the food budget, the new ability to go out after the second job, but where to? Facts never ever close to the fantasy. And we write them down, hang them under your pillow, right after you feel exhausted, too tired to sleep on your bed. Let's ask the question another way. What will happen when the depth and edges of your sleep are moved apart? There's a light and shape of a dream, a dream in full color. God's dream. Not yours. It tells you things about you that no one but God could. It's so true you have trouble grasping it. The voice comes which you know you've heard before but I pay no attention to and it says I am with you. I will give you, I will not leave you, and I have promised you. Will you understand the truth this time? Will you know that life will never be the same? Will you know dreams can change your future by remembering the past? Dreams can shape your life, giving it meaning. And hope. Will your dreams dare you to evolve? What happens when dreams come true? What do you do? Do dreams come when we have run out of all the things we are able to do for ourselves? Where do new leaders come from? Why do they come? Have you ever dreamed of who that leader is or how you will follow them into the future? Whose future? What future? Can you dream of the questions that need to be asked? Will you remember that in the middle of nowhere, that's where God's dream touches down. That the kingdom of God is here and now. That each moment of our lives, awake or sleeping, are spent at the gate of heaven. 
that it pleases God to be with us there. Bethel is not somewhere, but everywhere. In this white world of ours that you can think of that Yahweh has created for us to stop, dream, and live. There are no simple, painless solutions to our future. God needs us to learn new ways. Dream. Amen. Let's bow our heads and hearts and prayer. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, just as you brought new out of old for your fulfillment of the law and the prophets, so also continue to make us new taking our old self and refreshing and refashioning it by your grace into a new creation. Help us to let go of everything in our past that destroys our relationship with you, separating us from your love and the goodness it brings into our life. Help us dream of what can be, take what we are and recreate us by your power so that we can be the individuals that you would have us be. Almighty God, bless your church in Canada and around the world. Help each of us call Christian to live together in love and unity. Send your Holy Spirit upon the church so that by your word and the life example of those who worship there, we may bring renewed hope and healing to the world. Creator God, in this time of pandemic, we ask for strength, and you give us difficulties to make us strong. We ask for wisdom, and you give us problems to solve. We ask for prosperity, and you give us purpose and brains to use. We ask for courage, and you give us fears to overcome. We ask for patience, and you give us situations where we were forced to wait. We ask for love, and you give us troubled people to help. We ask for justice, and you call us to be just, and to lead with integrity. Lord, we have received nothing that we have asked for or wanted. And yet we received everything that we needed. And for this, Lord, our humblest thanks. We pray for the life of our country. Bless our leaders at all levels of government. Guide them, grant them freedom from fear as they continue to make difficult decisions. We pray for all Canadians who are passing through a time of trial through poverty, through ill health, through deep anxiety. Help them with your fear. Give them your spirit of peace and hope, Lord. We pray for those we love, our families and friends. Strengthen the love we have for them. Give them all they need for their welfare and happiness. Let no evil fall into their lives. Guide them in all they need. We pray particularly for Dylan Marhardy, Joan McElroy, the Minty family as they continue to mourn, Marlon Cole, Wally and Myrtle Greenlaw, Laurie Martin, Herb, June, and Jackie Ritchie, Lillian and Claire Robinson, Dave and Joan Snedden. And we lift up before you those in our hearts who are in need of your presence. We remember them 
in his moments of silence. We pray these many things in the name of Jesus the Christ, your Son, our Lord, who tell us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We ask and thank you, Lord, for all.